Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is a video about second editions and reprints on Kickstarter. And, and this is, or GameFound, or crowdfunding, or wherever, because we actually have had both. But this is a video that I both have already done a long time ago, to some extent, as well as a video that's been on my list to do again with covering different aspects of it. So I'll, I'll throw a link down below to one of the first videos I ever did on my channel. Feel free to watch that and... Well, I mean, I can't speak for you, but when I watch it, I definitely cringe a bit. It's the process of still getting familiar in front of a camera. One of my first videos on the channel, like I said already, I'm still getting better at being on camera. But anyways, the point is that I did a video once about the idea of second editions, reprints, about how publishers don't owe you anything, and I still believe that. It's a slightly different tangent to this conversation. When, when companies put out a new game... They may choose to offer some sort of upgrade pack for free. Uh, classic examples could be Machina Arcana. You could have you could have uh, G Barbarians: The Invasion. There's gonna be a host of examples out there where a company put out a new version of a game, and then along with that new version came upgrade packs or things you need to change. Or you now have the version of the game that has a typo here and a card that's printed wrong here. You may have all that, and that was more the focus of that video. This this video is tangential to that conversation, but not exactly the same. But the same idea is present. Uh, Black Rose Wars is currently on Kickstarter, which is why I decided to do this video now. It could have done it at any point. I've had it on my list for quite some time now. But Black Rose Wars Rebirth is currently on Kickstarter, offering a newer, grandiose version of the game, not necessarily fixing so much as streamlining different aspects of the game. Now, there's two different types of games that fall into this category. I specifically chose the four games behind me for a reason. There's going to be things that kind of show up in the market. They live a bit. They breathe. They, they give a degree of energy, or energy is the wrong word. They are played and they are experienced, and then the next version or iteration comes out. Uh, common examples, some common examples, will be Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown, Zombicide and every single other Zombicide that's ever been made, Seventh Continent and Seventh Citadel, uh, Mythic Battles, uh, Pantheon and Mythic Battles Ragnarok. Uh, you're going to have Lords of Hellas and Lords of Hellas Ragnarok. The Ragnarok reprints abound. The idea that a game will breathe in the market for a degree, finding that acceptance, finding the audience that wants it, and then it becomes something that starts entering into a reprint cycle. It becomes a potential opportunity for people to be excited about it again, for people who love it to jump back in, for people who never had the opportunity to experience to jump back in. But those games, they breathe a bit. They have their time. They, they get to build up that audience, that, that passionate fan base, before they come back for that second printing, that renewed version. And then there's Category 2, which is more the focus of this video. And Category 2 are going to be the games that don't give their audience that opportunity to breathe quite as much. You're going to have Wild Ascent and then Wild Ascent Levon Rising and the expansion and the reprint. You're going to have Chronicles of Drunagar and then the expansion and reprint coming shortly after the original launch. You know, you had a two-month gap, three-month gap before they already announced it before the, the original one launched. You have Black Rose Wars and Black Rose Wars Rebirth, although the truth is now that I'm thinking about Black Rose Wars, you could arguably argue, actually is in the first category, having lived and breathed for a little longer. You have Kingdom Rush and Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising. These are games where, whether it's an expansion or whether it's a adjacent copy, like Kingdom Rush and Elemental Uprising, are going to be two different standalone games where you had Kingdom Rush for, again, two months, and then Elemental Uprising came to GameFound. So you have these opportunities where a game is only in the market's hands for a short time before the expansion or reprint or standalone game shows up. And reprints on, the show, on their own are not a problem, but it's reprints with, you know, upgrades or changes or standalone games or expansions. And basically, the publishers not giving the audience room to breathe on that game. That's effectively what's going on with some of these, these categories. You see this happening on a regular daily basis. Games that have been sitting in your collection for who knows how long, whether it's two months or whether it's three years and haven't been played. And boom, the new version is up and out. And it's an opportunity to dive back in, but you haven't really experienced it yourself. Black Rose Wars is going to be a game that I first played Black Rose Wars and then two months later found out that they were doing another version of the game. Although I had the opportunity to play it for a while, I didn't. But I, I finally got a play in, and then, like I said, two months later, found out there's a new game. Uh, Lords of Hellas Ragnarok had it in my collection for three and a half years, or somewhere in that range, maybe less. Two and a half years, some, some length of time. Didn't play it. 
And then I got a game in. And like three days later, found out about Lords of Hellas Ragnarok. This, and, and those, by the way, the longer the game is in your collection, the more it's just my fault. Which we'll, we'll get into the, into the solutions part of this video, which is towards the end timestamp. Solutions, ideas, suggestions, call it what you will. But there's two reasons, in my opinion, why a, a publisher makes a second edition of a game. And the, the two often align. It's not like it's this or that. It's usually this and that. The first is for the love of the game. Now, a classic example of this is going to be Machina Arcana. Machina Arcana, which had the original game, the second edition, then the third edition, which was not really the third edition because really it's the second edition plus. Machina Arcana is a game that the creator of the game makes Machina Arcana. That's all they really do. They make Machina Arcana. That is their their project, their baby, the thing they pour energy and, and investment into and they want to perfect it and improve upon it. And so they keep coming back to it because they want it to constantly be better. There's a degree of love attached to that. That's going to be on the far end of the spectrum where there's clearly a passion around it to a, a large degree. But on any reprint or expansion or whatever, the designer, the publisher, the people invested, the artist, the, the developer, anyone who invested time and energy into the project, it's something you built and created and you, you want to see it continue. You want to see it expanded upon. Very often you have visions of how you can make it better, how you can streamline it, how you can add these things that you had to take out for the first version of the game because it would have been too overwhelming for people. It's a form of creation and there's love and energy attached to that and you want to continue to see it live on. And then the other reason, which again, not a contradiction to the first reason, but there are two reasons, is to make money. It's a nature of well, trying to run a business, and this, the nature of trying to run a business is that you need to make money. You need to pay the bills. There's just there's two levels. There's, well, I guess more levels, but the basic levels I put it as is, number one is you need to make money and just pay your employees, pay the people invested, and pay yourself for the time and energy you put into it. Number two is you want to get rich. That is always true. Everyone who's trying to make money is both trying to stay alive and trying to improve the quality of their life. There's nothing wrong with that. But... When it comes to the making money part of the conversation, you have a reprint or an expansion so that you can continue to cash in on a project that people will now buy the next one for. You'll buy the next copy of Mythic Battles Ragnarok because, I mean, that thing's going to make money, right? People love that game. They sat around, got well-rated for years and years and years. It is time to go back to that to that project because it will help your company, your people involved, the people who sacrificed and built the company. It'll help it do well. So by all means, do so. Or you'll have the Marvel United, Marvel United X-Men, where Marvel United lands and then X-Men gets launched right off the bat. And you, you have a short time to enjoy Marvel United before you find out that the, there's, a new, there's a newer version of Marvel United with X-Men and with you know, more variability to the characters, which could be something that people asked for the first time around and didn't get it. Come on. Come on. What are you doing to me? Okay, now I have to have both Marvel United and Marvel United X-Men because I like Marvel more, and plus there's the first one, and then I want Marvel United X-Men because while I care less about the X-Men, not I care less, but I care less about the X-Men, I want those unique, you know, more unique characters. Plus, apparently my wife watched all the X-Men shows, so it's more likely to sit at the table. So, all those things, what are you doing to me? Come on. But again, both things are true. The love of the project, and then wanting to make money. Now, this is where... This is where things get interesting because this is where publishers' interests and our interests as consumers aren't necessarily aligned because the publisher's interest is, like I said already, to, to both be involved and create the project they love and to make money. The consumer's interest is to have good games and you do want games to be reprinted. You do want them to be developed. You personally may not, but I think as an ecosystem, it's good. You are continuously seeing improvements or iterations upon properties that are loved and liked, and you continue to see them reprinted. It also gives people options. There's 15 different zombicides. You don't have to get them all. You can pick the two or three that you want. There's all these options on the table, and I like seeing games coming back to be iterated upon, to be improved upon, rather than another flash in the pan that's gone. I'm, speaking for myself, happy that reprints and expansions and more content comes out for properties that I may have learned to love or to appreciate, or maybe I haven't even tried yet, but now's my opportunity to dive into them. The problem becomes when the interests aren't aligned. You see, the interests of the consumer, 
would be the first category of games. Games that sit and breathe and have time for the market to see what the issues are, to, to, to talk about, hey, you know, this game was excellent, but the rules could really use some streamlining. This game was excellent, but the way you had the cooperative mode wasn't really balanced, and so we're going to try to focus on that in the second edition, to, to really give the market room to breathe around your game, to gather feedback, to see if it's even good to begin with. Sometimes you have games that don't stick around. It's the nature of, well, the world. It's the nature of board games. Not sometimes. Most games that come out do not stick around. They have their moment, and then they are never printed again, only to be found in the second-hand market. That's just the nature of the constantly making board games rural that we are living in. So the consumer's interest is to wait and see if it's even a good game, and then to be able to iterate properly and address whatever faults or lacks there were. Also, you have more time to build up the amount of people who may never have found it the first time around. The publisher's interests are not necessarily aligned with that. Because the reality is, when a game will find its audience, when a game will be loved, having that moment of a game breathing and sitting and being found and being well-rated, the more time you give it, to a degree, at a certain point you might have drop-off and people forgetting, but if you give a game a year sitting on the market, two years sitting on the market, the hype, the energy, the reviews, and then you come back a second time round, that second time round will be so much more impactful because you have two years worth of people who now want that game. You have two years worth of good ratings, of testimonials, of people talking about it, of hype building up around it. It is better for you. But that's only if the good is if the it's only if the game is good. If the game is not good, if the game is okay. It doesn't have to be bad. Most games are good. But if the game is okay, if the game is not memorable, then waiting is only a problem. Because waiting at that point means that a year goes by and no one's talking about your game anymore. And when your game comes back to Kickstarter next time, you've lost that energy. Do you know when people are talking about your game no matter what? As soon as it arrives. As soon as it lands on people's doorsteps and people are posting pictures, people are doing unboxing videos, people are talking about your game. There is a degree of energy of hype and buzz around your game if your game is halfway decent when it first lands. And so timing your next crowdfunding project for when a game lands is guaranteed to have that degree of hype and buzz. You're guaranteed this level. Wait too long and it can go here or it can go here. There's a bit of a wild card and you may not want to risk that, both if you love your game and want to see it continued and also if you're trying to make money and need to factor that into your projects. So that's where you have this mismatch of incentives, of publishers have a guaranteed paycheck, so to speak, if they launch a project right away, if they don't give a game time to breathe, versus consumers want to wait to see if it's actually good before they're forced into the decision of, sure, I played Kingdom Rush one time, but do I want to go back and get Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising? I don't know yet. I haven't even gone through all the content. What should I do? And so sometimes you just back it out of FOMO and nothing else, and that's where you have a misaligning of incentives. Now, I'm not vilifying anyone, to be clear. Again, both people want what's best for them. Publishers want to put out a game and to cash in it before the audience, before gamers just forget it. And it doesn't mean the game was bad. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying we live in a world full of thousands and thousands of games coming out all the time. Many amazing games are forgotten as soon as that hype is gone. And so a publisher may want to take advantage of the hype while it still exists to put out that sequel while people still cared about the first movie, so to speak. But again, not vilifying, just talking about the misaligned incentives. So what do you do? What are your options as a, as a backer, as a gamer? Sure, this conversation about, you know, second editions on Kickstarter, blah, 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 here's why it's happened, here's what's going on. All, I mean, fun. I just enjoy talking about board games. But what do you do? So there's really three things that I have. And they're all things we've talked about before, to a degree, I think, probably. I talk about a lot of the, I'll occasionally hit the same notes of advice of backing Kickstarters, advice that sometimes I follow and sometimes I don't, and that's the reality of the situation. But three small tips of how you should approach Kickstarter in terms of trying to ensure that just because the publisher has their interests, you should still be watching after your own. Number one is going to be don't back games you aren't playing soon. This is something that I'm, I used to be good at it. I used to be good at it before I started doing content creation. The idea that I back games and I prioritized when a Kickstarter came in, I prioritized playing it as soon as I could, generally. Again, I got worse after Contagration, although I never was perfect. A good example would be Lords of Hellas. That's that on my shelf for two years before I played it. But back those games, not back, play those games as soon as they come in. And don't back them to begin with if you don't think you'll be able to. Because 
when you get the game and you let it sit for two months or two years or four years and then the next one comes out, you will still have not engaged in the first property, the next Deep Madness, the next Madara, whatever the game is, Gloomhaven or Frosthaven, whatever they are. If you haven't even played the first one, then that, I mean, the second one's coming along and it arguably is streamlined or improved upon. Not always. Sometimes the streamlining makes the game worse, but it's too late now because you've sat in your game for four years. So don't back games that you aren't playing soon. This is a good idea in general, by the way. Why would you back a game that isn't going to hit your table in the first year after you get it? There's so many games coming out all the time. You'll be tempted by the next thing soon enough. Don't worry about that. So try to think through when you back games whether or not you will experience them and play them soon. Again, I used to be better at this. Content creation has meant that I have to prioritize a lot more new projects to cover them for Kickstarters as opposed to you know, getting to play them as soon as they arrive. That said, by the way, I'm still pretty decent about it. Just some things fall through the cracks. Ankh, I got my copy. I played it the next day. By the way, Ankh's really, really good. We'll talk about it later. Just shh. But then we have games like uh, Alter Quest, which I sadly didn't get played, and it's sitting there just looking at me with shame and me thinking. There's all these different games. Some games I'll hit, I'll prioritize right away. Some slip through the cracks. But I should be only backing games that I will play in a reasonable time frame after I get them. Number two, sell your current game as soon as the new one is announced. This is one that is a common problem. I saw this a lot with Machina Arcana. Machina Arcana came out, and it, or, or Everdell for that matter. Everdell came out with the, you know, the big box expansion all in, and people are complaining about it, about the fact that new backers were getting a better price, or new backers are getting the newest version with the updated components and the all-in box and all that. But they weren't in a rush to sell their copy because they wanted to keep playing Everdell. You can't have it both ways. When you have a new version of a game, either you are willing to sell your original game, the one you currently have, in order to immediately try to get as much money as you possibly can while there's still demand for it, and then use that money to buy the new version of the game. Either that's something you're interested in doing, in which case, great, do that, or you're not because you already like the game and want to play the game, and in which case, I mean, you still have a good game. You can't you can't have it both ways. Either the publisher's taking advantage or you had a game for a year that you're experiencing and enjoying and playing and you don't even want to get rid of it even now. So that's number two. So number two, two fingers this time. So yeah, number one, don't back games you aren't playing soon or you don't think you'll play soon. Number two, be willing to sell your game as soon as the new one is announced because, I mean, that's when you'll be able to get the most for it. The longer you wait, the less you'll have a chance. Number three, Number three is ask yourself when it comes out whether you really need the new version. This is going to be very applicable to games like Marvel United, to Kingdom Rush, to Black Rose Wars Rebirth. There are so many examples I can give of games where the new version hit Kickstarter. Even Nemesis Nemesis Lockdown, the new version hits Kickstarter. Do you really need the new version? Are you playing the original one enough that the new version is in some way worth getting? Is it just new and shiny? Is that what's going on? Is it actually actually genuinely fixing a problem with the game? While the Sentinel of On Rising is going to be an interesting one, if you're just if you're interested in the story aspect of On Rising, that's an actual genuine change. Is it still worth it? Hard question. You have to pay a lot of money to get there. Nemesis Nemesis Lockdown. What did Nemesis Lockdown even do differently? Raise your hand if you back Nemesis Lockdown because you love Nemesis and you don't even know what it does differently. I'm curious how many people fall into that camp. If you have Nemesis, you love Nemesis, you've enjoyed it, you're playing it, and Nemesis locked down his Kickstarter, do you even know what the changes are? For many of you, the answer will be yes. For many of you, the answer will be, well, I never got Nemesis. And there's going to be a decent amount of people who don't even know what lockdown does differently, but hit the back button because, I mean, it's Nemesis, so I'm going to get more stuff, right? You have that all the time. I'm, the, I'm guilty of that myself. Whenever a new Zombicide comes out, I back the next one, whether or not I know what it does. Because, I mean, for me, I, I just my excuse is that I'll sell the last one if I don't like it anyway, which I have done. I got Zombicide 2nd Edition. I was like, yeah, it's good. I like the campaign. Not enough to keep it. Keeping with Black Plague, sold Zombicide. Invader, on the other hand, I still haven't gotten rid of. It's been years now, and I keep saying that I will, but I haven't yet. So don't ask yourself whether you really need the new version of the game, whether it's actually solving a problem for you. Sure, it's tempting. Black Rose Wars Rebirth is on Kickstarter now, and it looks so shiny and pretty. But why are you getting it? Do you not have enough content in your original? Do you just want more shiny miniatures? In which case, I mean, if you want more shiny miniatures, go ahead and get it. Or maybe, and this is where it gets tricky, they do have this avatar system in the new version that might make player uh, two or three player games more robust by adding in some sort of AI. I don't know enough about it, to be frank. So there's some sort of new avatar system. Maybe that's what's worth it. Which, In which case, maybe you should consider getting it, but only if that's actually fixing a problem for you. 
these second editions are always tempting. Speaking for myself, they are always tempting. And I end up getting a lot of them. I don't end up getting all of them. Sometimes I'm not playing the game enough to care. Other times I haven't even my rule, the rule that I am very good at, is if I haven't even played the original, I don't back the next one. If I haven't played Black Rose Wars, I will not back Black Rose Wars Rebirth because there'll be another Kickstarter. Maybe I'll get in the secondhand market. I can't justify that. There's there's a degree of justification that I make for things, and there's a degree where I'm like, no, I will actually be responsible. That's basically the conversation. Three semi-tips as far as what you should actually do around it. But the general idea is at the end of the day, Publishers want to make great games. Publishers also need to sell games to keep the doors open. And that does mean there is a misalignment of incentives in the idea that publishers will want to get the reprint going when it is not most advantageous for the consumer, but it is the most guaranteed time for them. And they, if the game does well enough, they could always come back with the third version three years down the road when everyone does love your game. Again, not a critique against any publishers, not a critique against any games. Kingdom Rush is a game that I loved and was happy to see more content for it, not that I had played through the original content. This goes back to ask yourself whether you really need the next version of the game. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.